Committee of the Fayette County Commission to start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll start with the reports from the department heads. Uh, Jay Havlin, Highway Department. Excuse me. I, I skipped the minutes. We've got to approve them. Please stand up. There is a copy. Just stay. You've all got a copy of the minutes preceding meeting. Uh, is there any additions or corrections? Mr. President, if there are no additions or corrections, I move to accept the minutes as presented. Second. Good move and second. The minutes be approved as presented. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now, Mr. Havlin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've been pretty busy checking cans, getting roads ready to, get, to replace cans, and trying to fix some bad spots in roads. But with the rain we've had, we haven't had a lot of chance to get a lot done. We're slowly, we found 21 cans that need to be replaced so far. Small cans. And we're going to be, it's going to be a process getting them all done before we start chip sealing. I'm not sure how much <coughs> chip sealing we'll get done with the way our budget's been distributed, but we'll get what we can done. That's all we can do. We got a lot of we got some roads that really need gonna need a lot of repair on. <coughs> the they were broken up and beyond, you know, just gotta be dug up and then four base put in them and fixed back. But we're slowly getting. Now, as you know, I'll be on vacation starting tomorrow. Right. I was supposed to be the first week, but I, as you can see I'm here. <coughs> well we appreciate it. We've been trying to find a tractor. I've been looking through books and checking around uh, to replace the old international down there because it's been back to Miller Road there at least three times and it's it's just not it, if you're going to mow roadsides you need to replace it that's all there is to it because you can't keep it out on the road it keeps breaking down I've been uh, checked around and Martin's helped me check some places and I found that you can buy a new one a 500 horse tractor for as cheap as you can buy one through them books and nobody's got really anything on hand that can be used to do it. And a new one, the cheapest one I found was through Coaling over in Oxford. And uh, it's 47,978, complete, equipped with weights and everything. Now Smith was close over in Rushville, but they didn't put the weights on it. They were at 47, 47, 800. But the weights is another thousand dollars. Put the weights in the bracket on the front. And we have to have the weights. And you have to have the weights to carry that floor we got over there because it's, it's heavy. But that's not. We tried uh, international over there, and they said even if they could get one, it'd be the end of summer before they could have it. And they had nothing on their lot. And it, I, in my opinion, it's silly to buy something that somebody else has traded in because you're asking for their problems. And we don't need. We need something we can keep out on the road. I agree. And we're getting uh, what. About a 20% discount because, yeah. because we're. Uh, they don't, originally, they list for, I got a quote here. Let me find it. I think it was 62, and then with the discounts. They've got it down to 59.83, and then they added another 11,000 in discount on top of that. I think it was, which is pretty good. Because it's a government discount when you buy brand new. They can't do it on used tractors because they had one sitting on a lot over Smith's, but they wanted more for it. And he had to pay for a new one, which didn't make a lot of sense. Right. So it had like it had like a five or five or ten hours on it, which classifies as a used tractor. What are you doing with the old one? Are you trading it in, or we're using it right now to pour our broom? It right. don't seem to. It don't. The broom don't seem to bother it, but we haven't used it in warm weather. In warm weather, when you're using it to mow, something in the back end is, is killing the tractor. It's just right. slowing it down. And they've had it over there three times right. on hydraulics, and it's just not getting it fixed. It's, it's silly to keep putting money into it because it's like a we ninety. Could, we could sell that tractor. At okay, that's what I'm asking. We, we can sell it at a sale okay. later on. If we have a sale. All right. We've got an old Ford down there. It needs to, it's it's way it's a ninety. It's way beyond its useful years. It's so it, you said ninety. So it's at least fifteen years old, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. But that's what I have on that. 
and all I need is your gentleman's approval to go on with it, and I'll pursue finding money for it. Well, I, I recommend we vote. I mean, you you have to keep this equipment up. You can't just keep operating John forever. And <coughs> this is not general fund money where we're we're talking about. This is this is highway money, which which is not property tax, and it's it's a separate fund. And that tractor, when you start mowing with it, it stays busy all summer long. Right. It's in, it's rain or shine, it's, it's out there. That's just like the trucks we bought a couple of years ago. You have to keep the equipment wears out, and you have to you have to replace it. And that's and that's where we are. So I, it'd be in my opinion that we should go ahead and authorize purchase of this subject to the council, uh, transfer the money, so we can do it. Mr. President, I don't see any sense in buying used. <clears throat> and if we're getting something new, getting something that works and we have the funds for it, I will move to accept the uh, quote from Koenig oh, yes. in Oxford, Ohio? Yes. Okay. For the amount that uh, uh, Mr. Hamilton spoke of a while ago. Second. Then moved and second that we approve buying the, uh, buying the new tractor to replace the old one in action. Any other comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. One other thing, we've got our insurance money on the truck that was wrecked. It was $9,634.35. I give the check to Debbie and she put it back into the fund. We haven't been able to find anything. We've found a truck, but it's way more than what this is. But it's a nice truck, but just getting the money to do it might be a chore. So we'll keep looking. We found one that was a 2011, only had 40,000 miles on it, on a three quarter ton, which isn't a bad, bad buy. Pretty good deal. But we haven't seen anything else. It's hard if we can't find nothing in a 99 that's worth buying to replace this. When we bought this one, it was a 2000, in 2005 when it was bought, and it was 16,000 when we bought it, and it had over 100,000 miles on it. So it's just, I'll just keep looking on it and we'll see what we can find. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, sir. Maintenance, Bill Gray. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, update on the elevator. <coughs> Excuse me. He's uh, he's supposed to be here today or tomorrow to replace those uh, slide gate, slide guards on, uh -huh. on the elevator. I got some pictures here. I know I talked this a couple of you. You can look through it. This shows the guides. And the last picture on there shows the jack that they straightened up and put in. Um, all the jack work's been done, so it's all finished and ready to go. They're just waiting on the slides. Um, they had to have them made because the elevator's so old that they, they don't, can't get them. And this is something that should have been caught a long time This here is what you was talking before. <coughs> that's what, that's the that's jack. That's, that's what they got. Uh, Straighten up, install, put new braces and stuff on it. Because the jack was installed crooked. They couldn't pull it out of, out of the shaft because, because they backfilled it with concrete. If they pulled it out of the shaft, <coughs> they filled the hole up and had, had to have a drill come in and redrill the hole. So they straightened it up and got it to work. Uh, the other thing I had is I'd like to get permission to take those two big pine trees down in front of the courthouse. Uh, bagworms has got them dead. Uh, we're going to run into problems with them falling over if we don't get them out of there. I'd like to take them out and put a couple of smaller trees there or a couple of flower beds or something in there. But uh, they're just so big they can't. I had them sprayed about three times, I think. But they're so big they can't get to the top of them. Right. So they're just, it's just a they're big bat. They're just. Now, if you go out there and look at them now, there's bagworms hang, hanging on them right now. Right. So it's just. They'll eat them all summer, and then by winter we'll we're liable to have one on the on the courthouse. Now I've, ta I've talked to Jay and save the county money. You Jay thinks that the county can take those down if we if we decide to do that. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. So I need your okay. Whatever whatever the other two want to do, but I, do you need a motion or just a vote? Well, I think we do need a motion to do it, man. It's I I don't see we have much choice. I I love the trees. They're beautiful, but they're dying. Yeah, this one over here is really bad. Yeah, I, and this I, one over here is good now. We, we went out front a little bit ago and glanced at them, and they're really bad. So I would move that to, we allow Mr. Gray to uh, make arrangements for or take down the trees. Second. 
I've been moved and seconded to um, have the highway department take down the trees as per Mr. Grant's request. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Bill, if you would, get us a couple of quotes on, we did, we're, we're going to have to have those stumps removed, chipped out when, once those trees are done. Could you get us a couple of quotes on doing that? Have the dumpster removed. Huh? Well, I'm sorry, what did you say? On, on stump removal. Oh, stump removal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when we get them down, then we need we need those stumps taken out, and we don't have any equipment to do that. If you yeah. could get us a couple uh, of quotes on, on doing that. I'll contact going, because I, I, I've had some tucking out at home. Yeah, and they, they were it, real, he's real good. And then yeah. So I let think me there's call another him. person here in town. If we could get a couple of quotes. Yeah, I will. And I'll have them back at our, at our next meeting, and then we we'll go ahead and get that get that cleaned out. Okay. okay. I'll take care of it. Hey, Bill. Mm -hmm. Um. We had talked in the past about uh, putting a door downstairs and for the surveyor's office, and you had gotten a quote for that. Yeah, I got one. Well, you said you'd called several people, and you only yeah, got one. Yeah, and only one got back with me, and that's just nobody else has since. Uh, nobody wants to work it. So I'm not even sure I got that with me. I'm sorry. That's okay. Nobody wants to work it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. I, I just put. I don't have it with me. I'm putting out quotes, and nobody will. Nobody will build on. I have it in my office. I have it right here. You have it? Yeah, it was from Jim Holmes Construction yeah. for $1,250. Right. Then I think you also talked about getting him to add another, what were you going to take the old, the... They're just, no, they're just, putting, they're just putting one there. Oh, okay. we, yeah. talk, we talked about, oh, closing, about, about moving. closing the door yeah. that's well, we, in but, the... But we decided against it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah. They're, just, they're going to put a new door there. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think finished. that was... Unless they run into electrical or plumbing problem, but that's only. But I, I don't. I don't see any because there's. I've looked up in that drop ceiling. I don't see anything there. Do you need a motion to do that? Or? Yeah, I think we do. It's, it's done. Uh, I make a motion that we accept that uh, bid. Uh, to put the door in the basement uh, to move Bill McDaniel's to that office um, for that suge uh, suggested price. Second. We moved the second to uh, accept Jim Holmes' quote for installing a, a door in the surveyor's office going into the closet that the extension office is now using. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And the reason we're doing that is because we feel like we need to move the area planning down with the surveyor because uh, a year ago he lost his assistant down there, and by the nature of his job, he has to be, go out and inspect properties, and uh, a lot of times he's not there, and I've heard reports of people going down there as much as five times to try and catch him, and, and nobody's there. At least if, if you're moving down there, then there'll be somebody that can uh, know when he's going to be there and make appointments for the people to come so they don't have to just keep going time after time after time to see him. Okay, I'll and take care I, of it. I'd like to get that done. He needs to get moved down there as quick as possible. Okay. So I'll call we, him. As soon as we leave the door I'll call in, him. then we'll have we'll have him moved down. He's already started packing up. Okay. As soon as I leave here, I'll call him. Okay. Get that going. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Thank you, guys. Is that it, Bill? Yeah, that's all okay. I have. Next up is the surveyor warrant. Uh, I have some quotes for the Springer Ditch, some copies for each. The top drawing's the uh, Springer Ditch. We were, had quotes earlier for the section south of the river. I was told it was a 10 inch to begin with, 10 inch diameter pipe in there and, and according to plans that I've marked there is an 8 inch. So I had quotes provided for a 10 inch and an 8 inch in case it is a 10 inch. But uh, uh, for the 8 inch from Owens we had 3860 and from Wise Excavating 3,249 and for Munson 
2,553. And then uh, for 10 inch, Owens had 5,000. Wise excavating is 4,321. And Munson was at 3,693. Uh, there is a little over 3,700 in, in the Springer Ditch Fund at the present time. So, so we're just not going to wipe it out. What's that? We're just not going to wipe it out. Yeah. And I, I'm assuming we'd accept the Munson quote for $2,553 for the 8 inch. And then if it's a 10 inch, then we have to go to plan B, which would be the 10 inch. Okay. Well, what's the wishes of the commissioner's concern? So you're recommending Mr. Munson? Yes, it's a low quote. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Second, we accept the quote of Munson for repairing the uh, Springer ditch. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed carry. Can I get that for information? Yeah. Uh, we had a coordination meeting at NDOT, which you were there. <clears throat> Thursday it was a Wednesday, uh, and uh, Diane's got more information on that. Is she on the inventory? Uh, She's uh, later. She's later. Ready. Okay. So she can talk to us now if she wants to. <laughs> I just have a contract. Um, the county got approved to replace Bridge 25. That's the bridge out on 300 North, uh, west of. Uh, Harrisburg, and I just need some signatures to accept the money. Okay. I looked it over. It's yeah. I, I sent it to Chris to look over as soon as um, NDOT sent it to me. We should we should accept it. I move we accept the uh, uh, the bid. Second. We move to second accept the contract. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, and um, I should have the RFPs out in the next day or so on the NDOT websites. Should anyone look at those? If you'll go ahead and sign up. Okay. Contract. Get your signature as well. Just where the X, one of the X's. That's, mm -hmm. that's how you do it now. You put the RFPs on the website. Yes. Yes, signature. Yes, I'll play them for you. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. This was for 1.7 million. It's grant money, right? Right. We do a 20% match out of the bridge fund. X. Yes, X. I'll do the printing and all that. You so Printing and date. did from do you have one uh, in relation to bridge 25 I'll probably transfer uh, probably 150,000 from one of the culvert projects into uh, bridge 25 so we can pay our share or pay the uh, design consultant up front and then we get reimbursed uh, the 80 percent of that as we go on so, right. so to cover that there's like a thousand dollars in that in bridge 25 right now but it's a uh, design estimated fee is around 270000 So that's what I'm planning on doing. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Mark. <coughs> IT Director Ben. Morning. Morning. Morning, ben. Morning. Uh, The only thing I have for you today, I believe at the last meeting I mentioned we had a uh, one of our high capacity scanners up in the clerk's office was malfunctioning. It actually failed in between our, the last meeting and this meeting. 
uh, have three quotes in front of you. Um, the best price uh, that we're able to find to match a light scanner uh, is $1,391.25. Um, the only caveat with that low bid is we have to use a credit card. Uh, this particular company does not allow purchase on account. Um, but the, uh, the lowest that I could find buying on account was $2,073.64. So it's uh, right at $700 savings to use the, the credit card to purchase. Makes sense. Well, that be You've done that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've utilized that in the, in the past when we <coughs> find better deals. I thought he has a higher limit on his because uh, he has been putting some equipment on, has had to. Mr. President, if there are no objections, I would move that we allow him to uh, purchase the scanner at the lowest bid. Second. We have moved to second to approve the purchasing of the, of the scanner on the recommended quote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed carry. That's all I have today unless you have any questions. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. County Attorney, Chris? Yeah, um, the first thing I was going to bring up is that memorandum of, of, of understanding between the county and um, Union Pacific Distribution Services. you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, what, what he's talking about, you, you've probably read in the paper about the uh, windmill parts that, that are going to be coming in by railroad. Uh, they're going to be storing them. They're going to be offloading them over on the airport and storing them until they're trucked out. They're going to be trucked to Winchester, which means that they're going to be coming across uh, our county road from the airport to State Road 1. That's the road right just on the south edge of Gordon Estates. Uh, and the agreement he is talking about, it, we, those trucks are 200 feet long. Um, yeah, the agreement, they're basically acknowledging that some of the what they're going to be shipping is over height and overweight, but right. they're assuming all liability for any damage done to the county roads. What what the agreement states yeah. is that you know we we know that there's going to be some damage to the road, but we're going to uh, video that road before before the uh, project starts to make so both sides know what condition that road is in and they're agreeing to maintain the road so it's decent until they get done and when they do get done to restore the road back to the condition it is now. It's an economic uh, development project. The, the, of course the railroad will make some money off of that. The airport is uh, to get rent for storing those parts on there. I think it's thirty some thousand dollars and then they're also going to rent uh, a parking lot wherever they can find one to store the, for the trucks to park in the night. Uh, and this, this project is going to go on from May to December. It's going to be this summer, and then, and then it'll be over with. So, uh, yeah, I would just suggest that you make a motion to uh, accept this memorandum of understanding before they commence the project. So, right. And it's drafted. It's uh, constructed bond. Yeah. So we can say it's an economic development yeah. project and there's there's no reason not to do it. If we get our road maintained, uh, we don't have to fix up the road when they get done. So I would recommend we do it. Mr. President, I will move that we accept the, uh, and allow you to sign for uh, this body for the uh, memorandum of understanding with Union Pacific Railroad. Second that motion. Been moved and second that we have approved signing the memorandum of understanding with Union Pacific Railroad. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And um, <clears throat> I had one other thing, but I could wait for uh, Kathy to speak or about the reassessment contracts. Well, if you want to, she's up here she's later here. on. So, yeah, do. so we'll, we'll just wait till she gets up. There. Okay. Okay. Is that all you have at this time? Yeah. Okay, we're going to the mail. Um, council representative. Oh, I did skip the council representative. We have one. Couldn't, I couldn't see you back there. Probably did it on purpose. You paid your fill of us. 
Well, all right. Good nature. I'll be down to see you this evening. All right. Well, uh, the Odyssey thing I've been looking into for the clerk and the court system is on track. Uh, as I mentioned, I talked to some of you uh, offline. Uh, I was at a special hearing for the oversight committee for JTAC. Give a report on why we're doing it and so forth, and that's uh, moving along nicely. I talked to uh, Ben briefly, and he said that he's on track. He's been in contact with them, and that's that's all moving ahead. There's another portion of it that I gave you guys some paperwork on it. It's an electronic uh, ticket writing system that the state uses, Indiana, use, Indiana State Police use. Um, I checked into it because a couple needs. One, seeing if we get the sheriff's department a few uh, printers, or not printers, uh, laptops, but they said they've, they've got laptops, they've done that within the past year. But um, there's some grant money out there available for some free equipment for the sheriff's department and the police department. So the city police are benefiting from this Odyssey program as well to the tune of $10,457 and some loose change. They're going to be getting six laptops and six scanner printer combinations. So what they'll be able to do is scan people's driver's licenses. I hope I'm not the first one to find out about this new system, and uh, which I probably will. That uh, they scan this information, it's automatically, once they come back to headquarters and whatever, it's transmitted to the court system so there's no lost paperwork. Uh, you don't get the errors, writing tickets and so forth because you're scanning the information off the barcode of the back of your driver's license. <coughs> uh, local ordinances can also be uh, or will be uh, loaded into the system as well. So both county and city ordinances will be done. So uh, my goal is that's just a little way to streamline the system here. Uh, we're benefiting about $2,100 worth of equipment for that. We don't write as many tickets as the city does apparently. So they base the amount of equipment based upon the amount of tickets that are written per year. Uh, they've been in touch with the Sheriff's Department, they've gotten their reports, and the Police Department, that's how they determine this figure. Um, may have crossed the line a little bit in the commissioners, I'm hoping in a good way, didn't mean to, but um, you know, saw an opportunity to strike and, and took that opportunity to save the county some money and for us to benefit from it. So that's um, really all we have to report, I believe. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. We have a letter from the health department from Dr. Whiteley, uh, the health officer, asking us to consider Joe Long as a health board appointee. Uh, is he on the board now in his time? Is this ending or? You know, I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't think he is on the board. I think when you did your appointments, um, we didn't have a recommendation for um, the health board, so this would fulfill um, well, I guess that it said, empty slot. It, it says here that the appointment's for January the 1st, yeah. 2014 through yeah. 17, so I guess we've been going without an appointment. Uh, whatever the rest of you two think, I, I have no objections from Mr. Long in front of you. Good appointment. I've known Joel most of my life. I think it would be a great appointment. Having said that, do you need a motion? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, we do. I move to allow or to appoint Mr. Long to the health board. Second. Then move and second that uh, we appoint Joel Long to the health board for a term January 1st of this year through 31st of 2017. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We, Debbie, we have this letter from Lenny Jones. Is that anything? I can thank you. Um, well, I hadn't, I really hadn't seen this before. Um, I'd like to have Kathy look at it. I think what he is asking, um, there's an employee that has, um, due to health uh, reasons, he has exhausted his sick days and vacation days, and he is just requesting um, that additional leave time um, for sickness be approved, not that 
it would be paid time, but it would, just it would, it would be time he would off. be ex yeah it would be basically excused absences if he had to be off for the same medical condition. Can we that's what can we handle that down there as far as man yeah, yeah. He mainly is going to use them for his doctor visits on his follow ups on what he's off for because he needs days to cover them. So the man about has to go to the doctor when he needs to. So I, I, I say no objection to, to approving it. Move to approve. Second. Move moved and second to approve uh, Mr. Jones uh, extending that, extending his FMLA. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Do we have any other mail, Debbie? Four days. Is that what you say he needs? Or? Yeah, that's what he wants. I think that's what he put in there for Did he say four days? Well, and he currently isn't isn't on FMLA because when he came back to work he was released. with no yeah. restrictions, he was released by his doctor. But he will have follow-up doctor's does, appointments. This so. doesn't say how many days. Okay. Yeah. Do we have any more mail, Debbie? Uh, that's all I have. Okay. Old business. Umball contract? Um, no one's here about that. She had emailed me. Um, remember, we had discussed that um, at a prior, I think probably at, the, at one meeting, we had discussed that I had gotten uh, an email from Umball. There's, there are certain requirements for our bond issue um, associated with arbitrage that you have to. Um, you have to do reports or do things for over like a, I think it's like a five year period. And um, they were sending a, um, she had sent through a letter of engagement, but she had indicated that it wouldn't, the cost, remember I said, wouldn't exceed $3,000. But that was that. not in that, um, that, yeah, that was not in that letter of engagement. So I emailed her back and asked her, and I, and I told her I would like to have it by today, but if she didn't, we can just uh, table this to the next meeting. Okay, let's, let's just do that. Reassessment contract. Kathy? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, at the last meeting, we had uh, five companies submit bids for the reassessment. You opened them and we took them under advisement. and. Um, they were all pretty close in the bid and what they bid and it was a hard decision because there were big companies but we went ahead and um, we chose um, Ad Valorum for our company to do our reassessment, our training, our new construction. They're the company that's currently um, we're working with and we've been pleased with what they've done so far and going into the uh, the reassessment they'll be familiar with our county and, um, and, and the work seems satisfactory so far I know I've invited each I, I talked to Frank invite each of the commissioners to come and ask us any questions if there were any questions concerning the contract or any of the bids that were presented and after uh, we just decided at the end of last week what company we were going to go with and I gave uh, Chris a copy of the uh, contract so he could check it out to see if it's all right. I also talked to Del Strong um, from the council and we just went over numbers to make certain at this point and then uh, that we would have enough money to go ahead and, and finish out the contract for uh, the, the four years of the reassessment. And you and feel like you did, right? Pardon? You feel like you are going to have the money to yes. fulfill the contract. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we talked to Dale about the future too. Uh, you know, we know yeah. the county is the city and the county. It'll be tight with their budget, so uh, at this time we have the money, and then with what money we will have coming in for this year, we'll have the money to to do the reassessment contract. What What helped was um, the state this time. They set what uh, what rate the levy for the new reassessment fund uh, in order because a lot of counties were like we were, were um, had not enough money in their reassessment uh, fund to cover the last uh, general reassessment. So, uh, and we were that way and I don't, 
you know, some of you, I don't think um, either Zane or Frank were on the board at the time, but we had to end up paying those reassessment, the bulk of that reassessment contract out of County General. Two reassessments came out of that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they set that rate for two years, set the set the levy, and then that was that was the the council then um, had to approve um, had to approve the budget, and they kept the levy fairly uh, fairly stable with what the state had set, but they did add um, they were already paying she was already paying one part time person, and they added one full time person over to take out of the reassessment contract so those things you know have you know that's kind of because that was the rate was set up there it's kept that 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 fund balance so that we will have enough if you keep enough money in there then we don't have to pay it out of county general. and we're even we even looked at maybe we'll be ten dollars ten thousand dollars probably shy due to um, just the property caps cutting that part well at that time as part of the levy so uh, we took it into consideration not collecting around ten thousand dollars for this year. So, I think there are any questions, or I have the contracts here to be signed. And uh, Chris, you had something to say? Uh, I mean, the Department of Local Government Finance pretty much issued a standard form contract for this. So, mm -hmm. you, I mean, there are, you, we can't make any alterations even if we wanted to, but it's it's a Fine contract. I mean, it's a well-written contract, and has to be approved by the state. Mm -hmm. so do you signed. have the original for them to sign? Pardon? Do you have the original? Um, we had that one, and there were two others. They they need to be signed, and this one here is not bound. It gets uh, signed and sent to the state. It's not uh, a binding contract until the the DLGF puts their signature to it, and they'll look it over. That's the one they need to sign. Yes. And then so I'll send we the need all three, and then yeah. this one will go up. Will be sent to the DLG. I think it gets sent electronically. Uh, gets sent to the DLGF, but we'll have these copies, at least two copies here, <coughs> until we get here from the DLGF. And refresh me. How much is that contract for? It's for. It was for three hundred and thirty-eight thousand four hundred dollars, and it's for four years. It includes reassessment, it includes uh, sales disclosure, verification, new construction, and trending. Okay. Well, the other thing is you, you've done this long enough, you know what you want, what your office needs. So, you know. And it's also written in here when we'll put the bids out that if, and of course say, it's written that if there's some duty in here that uh, find we we can pull it out and we can try to do it in-house if we can or, or to uh, reduce the contract yes and so there's a lot of things there's some things that we can do and some things we can you, for, you foresee then maybe being able to do some of that yes uh, yeah like sales disclosure work it's just right now trying to finish up all the appeals yet and it's just getting out in the field uh, we can borrow like I said Bill Gray's truck it's a lot of times it's just transportation that's a problem. Um, having a vehicle to go out and to do some of the work and, uh, and time. I said, I can use well, my I, vehicle I, and I don't care to go out. Well, we've talked about this before. I think we can provide transportation or work it out where you, where you can. We've got enough vehicles around that we can form a tool and do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we do need to approve contract for her to be able to go ahead and do this. So move. Second. Then move and second that we approve the contract with Ed Lorem as per Kathy's recommendation. All there's um, there's two places to sign. Uh, I stuck it here and I didn't have uh, what Chris has. This one signature page here, um, the vendor signed, I signed, and the commissioner signed, and that's just accepting the contract. And then this other <coughs> signature page here is for in lieu of a performance bond, which could get costly. They're going to do a 10% retainage on uh, for 10% of the work on the reassessment. We'll hold that back in a sec for the count, and um, then when the work gets completed satisfactorily, we'll give them their money. 
and that worked well. We'll, we'll make sure that gets met properly. Yeah. Okay, we still need to vote on approving the contract. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed and carried. Thank Would you. you like to sign this now or pick it up? We'll sign it after. We'll sign, we'll sign it after. 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 This one here in Thank you, Chris, for checking in. Thank you, gentlemen. Anytime you have any questions, you just come up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Jail report. Mr. Waste. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning. How are you, Mr. Jackson? I'm fantastic. Good How about you? Good. Oh, wonderful. Good. Well, this is sort of bittersweet. This is my last one that I have to provide to you guys as the Sheriff. So next year there will be somebody else standing here unless, of course, they make me do it. <laughs> it could happen. So um, this is our jail report for 2013. Um, if you would, we'll just uh, really hit the uh, take time. I don't want to read the whole thing. Okay. I have a filibuster like what Linda said. So if you go to the third page, the booking statistics, you can sort of see where we are. Um, 2012, we had 1,025 bookends, admissions. 2013, we had 1,043. So we're up. Uh, male arrests are 742, females 301. If you look over to 12, you can see we dropped in male arrest and jumped up 40 in female arrest. All right, which hence the 33 women I have in jail. And in the back in the day, to have that, if you had five, it was a huge amount. Now we have 30, so they're taking up a couple of blocks, and it really makes for housing difficulties on getting them arranged. Um, go to the next page, down at the bottom. In 2012, we made $70,000 uh, from DOC. In 2013, we made 145385 We doubled it. So, how that happens is, DOC has five days once they're sentenced to make arrangements for transports. After that's set up, we have to transport them up there. So however long it takes over that five days, they have to pay us for it. Um, I don't want to say with our relationships that we've, we've forged with some of the people at DOC and the working relationship we have with them, that we've been able to allow them to, you know, they're giving us leeway on when we're to bring them. So they're giving us a few extra days to keep them. They don't have room and they're starting to get filled back up, which is allowing us to, get, to make some money off of them. Um, I mean, we doubled it. I know it's nowhere near, you know, the 2011 uh, funding. The funding is on there for 244,000. Uh, it's nowhere near that, but it's doubled from last year. Um, next page. Uh, just go through a couple of the top charges for 2013. Theft was again number one throughout the whole county and the city. Um, that theft that constitutes anything. That's shoplifting from village pantry that kind of crime. It was number one with 275 arrests for that. Um, once you drop down after that, you got OVWI at 185 and then battery. You can sort of see where some of those have jumped, sw switched places. Possession of controlled substance um, was 150. That's only up six from last year. Um, what the, what I'm really, I don't like seeing on there is burglaries uh, of homes, businesses, we don't even have, it doesn't even make the top 10 in our community, thank goodness. Knock on wood. Um, you see a lot of, there's a huge jump up in possession of paraphernalia. That's mainly due to the amount of needles that we're finding on offenders when we arrest them. Okay. So, um, and that, finding those needles really enhances, you know, the chances of, of getting stuck 
for the officers that are dealing with him. Frank done it for 300 years that he was at the city police department. He encountered it, or 30, something like that. Where do you put the desk? So um, those are sort of the top charges we had. Um, you guys can look through that if there's any questions. Um, on our staffing, we're still, according to the analysis provided to us, we're still down by six officers uh, for our jail. That's two per shift. To have adequate full staffing compared to the analysis of what we have compared to now we have now. You said, I'm sorry, you said down four? We're down six. Six, I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, we just want to put that out there for you guys to, to review. And that's part of what we have been down, right? We've been down that for, yeah, for a while. Well, a long while. Right. So, um, on the next page, transports. I think it gets missed a lot on some of the transports, and when I catch a lot of the grief for some of the gas, and I come over here and ask for an additional for gas come probably August or September, like I've done for the last eight years. Um, our transports run about 60,000 miles a year. Okay, that's everything. That's medical transports, hospital visits, doctor visits, psyche valves, transports to DOC. We're running about 60,000 a year on that. <clears throat> Um, over time in the jail, in 2012 it was $23,200. We've cut that down to $18,276. Um, our jail kitchen budget, well, it's been the medical. Um, again, the medical thing is probably one of my, one of the things I do really well when it comes to talking to these providers. Um, in 2012, we had $137,000 in medical costs. In 2013, we're down to 113,000. Um, and I'm rounding these numbers, so you know there's some other numbers. But um, I mean, all of that is, is done through I think relationships we have forged in the last eight years with healthcare providers, and it's mainly me. It's the only time I'm really going to take credit for a lot of this is this is me. I do all the negotiation with these healthcare providers. I know the law. I know the statutes that we have to provide them. Every time we call, even if I call them a hundred times, I have to go back through the statute, I have to educate them on it, and what they're required to do versus what they want to do is usually two different things. Uh, again, we get charged a Medicaid rate plus 4%. So that has really, has really saved our county. I'd, I'd like to go back and figure up the whole eight years now, well, the whole, at least seven, that I could figure out what we've saved the county in that time in medical savings just by spending... It's, it's been a lot of hours on the phone, but on the phone, I sort of think that's what we should do to cut these costs. I mean, we've we got huge costs in that medical area, and everybody needs to understand that we have to pay their medical bills. We have to. Right. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And if it's a million dollars, it's a million dollars. Now, that doesn't say we don't argue and debate it. If, if some won't come on, one group right now, we owe 24000 bucks. They will not... They will not concede that the statute's there, and they don't recognize it. So they've been told numerous times that, well, here it is, state law, you're going to do it, or not. We're about to refer them to Chris, so Chris can argue with them about it. But we try to be nice with them. They're from out of state. They don't get it. So I don't know how they're going to come and repo our service that they provided. So I don't know what they're going to do about that. But um, our jail kitchen, again, our budget there is $300,000. It's huge. But we're providing meals at $3.90 a piece per meal. Okay. I, I'm not sure any of you eat lunch today. Let me know how $3.90 fares out, and we serve a pretty good meal to the inmates. Nobody loses weight at the jail. Well, insert joke there, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I do, if I can interrupt you for one second, yeah. I do want to highly uh, praise the, the jail kitchen staff as yeah. well as all your staff, okay? But the jail kitchen, uh, Judy Dickey, who is the lead cook, is usually in the kitchen by 4.30 in the morning, Easily. sometimes earlier. And when I was sheriff, uh, we didn't, I didn't have near the population to take care of that Billy does. And what you don't think of is when you have a, a big increase in population, your, your your food budget goes out the window. So you have additional appropriations and you have to feed them. And there aren't, and you have women that work in a kitchen, there aren't a whole lot of women that are lined up to take a job 
that starts at 4 30 in the morning working in a jail full of, of inmates right so uh, you've got uh, in your your whole staff over there everybody there uh, they do an excellent job yeah the, the jail ladies they do do a good job i mean we serve you know about 345 meals a day i mean every day because our average daily population is 115. so that's a lot of food that's a lot of biscuits and gravy that's a lot of eggs a lot of toast um it, it, it's a huge job and they do they do a wonderful job and judy is i mean i don't mess with judy so <laughs> yeah, I don't. She told me to cook eggs. I cook eggs. I'm not arguing with her. So, but she's really good. And uh, so that's sort of where we are with that. Um, everything else is running about like it has been. They're working on the freezer, uh, putting a new front on the freezer, the walk-in freezer today, because those doors are well. The jail's built in '89. They're still the original, so those need to be changed. Um, we're going to have to look at doing some work on our padded cell. It seems like we get them in there and somehow, lo and behold, they find the least little nick in that coating on there and they'll have their finger in there and have half of it ripped off and eaten it by the time we can get back there and stop them. So, um, we're having to work on that thing constantly. But, we, we have about have to have it with the amount of people we have come to jail that want to they want to wrestle and not behave and try there to is hurt a, themselves. Is, there is a camera in the padded cell, isn't there? Yeah. And we've gotten some restitution from some. I mean, we've, we've done pretty well on trying to go after those people for that. And that's worked out. But again, it's tough to get blood out of a turnip. And when they don't have any money, what, I mean, what are you going to do? Right. So, um, other than that, everything seems to be going as good as, as planned. Um, we've got some things coming up. We're going to be asking for a couple different projects that I don't really want to go into yet because I don't have all my ducks in a row. But any questions you have, I'm more than glad to feel them. Um, you were talking earlier about your transport. Do you find yourself transporting more inmates at one given time or back and forth to where if you had something bigger to put them all in, you could? They're um, mainly the transports are during the day, mostly daytime hours. Where we run into that problem is, is when we go to DOC and DOC calls down and wants 10 brought. We were using the community corrections um, van that they, they have a large car per person van, but the transmission went out of it. Um, they're not going to fix it, so we're down to now hauling, you know, three at a time in our uh, in our Impala running the reason, them up there. The reason I asked that is because I saw a minivan here in Fayette County the other day. Mm -hmm. um, it was a sheriff's vehicle. Right. Um, I thought never really thought of it. You get a van, you can transport more prisoners in one fail swoop, and you don't have right. to spend all well, that. Fortunately, we don't have to go with 10 prisoners all the time. It's it's once or twice in every couple of months, maybe, for DOC. Other than that, it's usually single one-on-one. -on -one. And Frank and I talked about a van when he was the sheriff. We looked at some of those things. And it just, I guess, I guess to have it and not need it is better than to need it and not have it. But the, the fix for a half of that in power when I'm getting 30 you know, 33 miles per gallon for gas at gas at 375 you know 350 a gallon offsets me having a van now it worked out great when the community corrections had theirs and it, it worked out great for us but they're not going to fix it um, I talked to our mechanic who takes care of it John Gray he felt like because I thought maybe we should fix it and then we could use it he felt like the motor probably wasn't sound enough to dump a lot of money in to do both projects so it's sort of we're going to do it this way until we can come up with another van to borrow, so to speak. And I don't think that's going to happen. So, but it does. It does inconvenience thing when we have to take ten because that DOC will call and want ten prisoners at once. And that take. I mean, that takes a couple of three trips. Ryan has to make the DOC. That's clear. That's in Plainfield, on the west side of Plainfield. So. I think. I think you should point out, or people should know that uh, it used to be that DOC came and picked them up. Yes. Now the state in its infinite wisdom has decided that the smaller counties who are broke anyway, they can yeah. they can do their job for them by transporting to the prisons. Right. So when, you, when we were a holding facility for DOC, and that's what we were doing, they would come and get them. But now that we're not holding anymore, they feel like we can just run them up there. So what, Which, you're, what you're saying is if you bought a van, it really wouldn't warrant having the van because you're only going to need it once a month anyway. Exactly. Right. It, at a max once a right. month. So it doesn't cost, it's not cost effective enough. 
Um, and again, I'm not going to squabble with DOC to run them up there when we're when they're letting us keep those guys. And it's taking some tracking on my court officer and, J and Zach um, going through some things to see exactly where we are in that five days because believe it or not, the state won't always tell you what you need to know. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> yeah, so we make sure we're on that, that, that timeline and I don't know, they've doubled our DOC take and I'm not going to argue with them over some transports to DOC for gas. Because so. they could cut us back to zip. So. Any other questions? No. Okay. All right. Thanks for all your hard work. Thanks, no problem. You guys have a good day. Agenda is SRA Commissioner's Seminar. sale resolution for Debbie, you're going to speak to that. Yes. Um, last year we did, well, let, let me explain if, if for anybody that doesn't understand. Um, annually we have a tax sale um, and uh, properties that have unpaid taxes for uh, three installments, so they'd be a year and a half behind on their taxes are put on a tax sale and then uh, if someone uh, someone wants to buy the certificate to that property and they have to pay what um, they have to pay what the back taxes and any other special assessments that are owed on, owed on that property then the property owner has up to a year uh, to redeem the property um, and then the the certificate buyers, the buyer at the tax sale, the lien buyer, they they make money because uh, when someone redeems a property, they pay back interest. Okay. There are always a number of properties that do not sell because the taxes owed are more than what someone uh, wants to invest in that property, and there's always a number of them. So. Uh, when they don't sell, those certificates then are 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 uh, be, are put into the commissioner's name. So we have these uh, certificates sitting out there that have the commissioner's name on them. So we actually so the commissioners actually own the lien on it. So uh, you tip we we try to do once a year um, a commissioner's certificate sale to sell those certificates that the commissioner commissioners own put kind of a low dollar price on them. We in the past have always started them out, started bids at around $200, and then they sell to whoever the highest bidder is. Say you had, you know, $5,000 owed on taxes, we get a bid of $1,000 on it. Um, the redemption period is shortened up. At the end of the redemption period, whoever buys that lien gets the property for the thousand bucks and we write off the four thousand dollar taxes it sounds like an awful way to do things but we weren't getting any money on it before now we've got it back on the tax rolls and hopefully you have some properties then that someone's going to come in and either going to come in and fix them up and rent them out or you know maybe live in them or whatever well we didn't have a sale last year well we've got a number of those bit build up now uh, so um, I am proposing that uh, we have a commissioner certificate sale uh, this year and the sale date uh, would be scheduled for uh, Wednesday June 4th at 10 a.m. now there's um, you know there's some work to do it you have to you know you, it has to be advertised three times those properties are put put in the paper um, so it's it's kind of it's extra work on my office it's extra work on Mary's office but it gets some of these properties off dead center and gets them moved on and start you know collecting some money on them and so um, I have a resolution uh, for the commissioners to sign um, in regards to the sale uh, just allowing us to proceed and have that sale do you think that um just out of curiosity, you said that there's some properties that nobody wants. Do you 
you think dropping that two hundred dollars would even make a difference, or they just nobody's going to buy it? Anyway? There are some that we still don't uh, we still don't even get a, a bid at commissioner if sale. If they buy it for two hundred, they wouldn't buy it for five cents. Right. I uh, just last week I looked into. I had a constituent ask me about a particular particular piece of property that he was under the impression would probably go to commissioner sale, and. Uh, I checked on it because I wasn't really familiar with the procedure. Particular property was built in 1890. It's only got around a thousand square feet. It, excuse me, it assesses for around 17 and some change, and there are 19,000 dollars in taxes due on it. <laughs> and uh, but and, and I'm really reluctant to give nineteen thousand dollars in taxes however you can't get blood out of a turnip you can't however, get blood out of a turnip yeah. and if you sell a house to someone who's going to fix it up and either live there or rent it then you're at least putting some money back into the tax rolls mm -hmm. the, the mechanism for uh, people and not everybody gets behind their taxes as a bad person I mean people have financial problems and in, in, in times but there are people who owe uh, a lot of money in back taxes and the mechanism is just not there to retrieve the money. The, the other problem, um, and I know this firsthand from having been treasurer, uh, but we, we receive notification of, um, of bankruptcy. So if, if say, uh, someone owns, owns a property, it's behind in tax, but they have filed for bankruptcy, we can't sell that at tax sale. So then that'll get hung up for maybe several years mm -hmm. and that mounts up. There were there are some that get that get hung up because we don't get notification that that bankruptcy's been released. And um, the other thing that adds to that sometimes isn't just a property tax, it's the special assessments like, you know, weed lien, you know, mowing liens that uh, that the uh, city puts on uh, sewer liens, storm sewer liens, uh, all of those, all of those mount up on there. So sometimes it isn't just, you know, if that, if that has a big amount due, it could be ten thousand. I've seen them have ten thousand dollars in uh, weed liens. I don't know that they are building up because didn't the city reduce? I think they reduced uh, some of the costs that they were charging for coming in and mowing those properties. But uh, anyway, that'll get some of these um, SRI who has done this for us. For years, um, they uh, they provided uh, they drew up the resolution, and then um, you know we have a we have a, a contract. You know we've had previous contracts with them. This is their standard contract. Uh, we pretty much always used, and um, uh, it would need to be signed by you guys the contract to have the tax sale. Um, I had just gotten this, Chris. I do you do you have a copy? I looked yet? it over. I mean, I'm familiar with SRI. Yeah. They're, yeah. I think the biggest in the area for tax they sales are, and commissioner sales and for any type they, of yeah. they do they do the sheriff sales for yeah. For the yeah and and yeah. they provide. There's a system then that we go into to update, uh, like, well, what we call 137B cost. You buy something and then. You can you can go ahead and do do some um, title search work, and if you pay the taxes, then the next time they come due, then you can fill that in. And then if somebody comes in and redeems the property, then the lien buyer gets their money back they've invested in it, and it'll track those kind of costs. And then if somebody wants to redeem it, it calculates a percentage and all. So um, it sure takes a lot of work off the bus to to do that. Need a motion. Yeah, we need a motion to accept. It. Accept the contract with SLRI. Someone? Second. And move and second. Accept the contract with the SLRI. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Court House Loan Improvement and Tree Removal. We've already taken care of the tree removal. The uh, Court House Loan Improvement, uh, several months ago I talked uh, to the Garden Club, Fayette County Garden Club, about maybe they could uh, come up with some ideas on uh, improving the looks of the courthouse out here, the landscaping in the front, and they 
they have agreed to do that. Um, lady came down the other day and met with me, and they're going to plant some knockout roses and some of them put some planters on the side of the steps, and we really appreciate them doing that. Uh, they're doing some community service. And, uh, it, it needs some improvement out there. It'll look a lot better when they get done, I think. Union Pacific Railroad, we've already done that. That's the end of the items on the agenda. Is there any patrons concerns? I think we can buy a lot. Still had a clear If not, uh, we have the claims in the payroll. We need we need to approve uh, the paying of the claims in the payroll. Move to approve. Second. We move to second to approve the claims in the payroll. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Again, if anybody else has anything before we adjourn, not an intended motion for adjourn. So moved. You want to adjourn? Second. Yeah. <laughs> well, something just came to my mind. But we'll bring it up. Um, something come up to to. Uh, we have we're making some changes on uh, the cemetery commission, and um, some people that. We need to move around, and uh, we think it, bet it better suits the county. So um, uh, Chris had talked about it before. Um, we need a resolution to say that uh, we're going to make a change with one of our cemetery board members, which would be Lenny Westerfield, um, and we're going to appoint someone in that position. Um, I think uh, some of us are in agreements that uh, we should make this change. Uh, we will actually give the notification to that person by letter stating, you know, uh, we're going to make the change and this is in how many days. I don't know. I would say by our next meeting we could give that person the letter saying that we're going to make this change. Um, not so much, uh, we really don't want to get into reasons or performance or anything like that and throw anybody under the bus. Uh, we're just going to make the change. And I think we have the obligation to make the change as the county commissioner. So I make a motion that we do make the change by the next commissioner's meeting uh, to replace uh, Mr. Westerfield on the cemetery commission with someone that the other commissioner, two commissioners, can agree on that they want to. And I believe they have someone in mind. I'm just not going to say that name because we don't know yet. I'll second the motion. Then we have a second. We took the resolution to change the personnel on the cemetery commission. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now, has anybody else got anything? If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Someone. Second. Been moved and second to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.